In this week's video fishing forecast for New England, we got to look at what prizes are up for grabs in the inaugural Coastal Kayak Clash Fishing Tournament. Continued great bottom fishing in Buzzards Bay as well as Rhode Island with cod and black sea bass being landed. Some big striped bass up to 40 pounds landed in Rhode Island surf. An update on Niantic Shark Week. Details on Robin's Revenge Fishing Tournament as well as much, much more. Let's check it out. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Hey there, Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine with this week's web video fishing forecast for New England. Before I hop into the reports this week, I just want to go over a little something for you. As I'm sure you're already well aware, we have a brand new fishing tournament here for subscribers of the Fisherman Magazine. It's the Coastal Kayak Clash. And I'm going to go over the prize structure, what you have up for grabs this year. So first up, Grand prize is going to be a brand new Old Town Autopilot 136. It's the flagship of the all-new Sportsman series. The Autopilot includes a fully integrated GPS-enabled Minn Kota 45-pound thrust trolling motor. And the kayak will also be equipped, equipped excuse me, with an FL Troll lighting kit from our friends at Yak Lights to ensure that you can see and be seen on that next kayak angling adventure. Now your retail value, we've got uh, uh, $39.99 on the kayak and $349 on the lighting. So first place is roughly a $4,500 package. Then second place, we got an awesome kayak trailer package from the guys over at Malone Auto Racks, which includes an extra light Lomax trailer along with two sets of bunks, a beach hauler soft terrain heavy duty boat cart, and a striper four rod carrier. It's the perfect setup to get you to the shore and out on the water for your next kayak outing. We got a total value on this of $1,988. And then third place coming in from our buddies at Humminbird. We got a brand new Helix 9 Chirp Mega SI Plus GPS G3N Fish Finder. This bad boy's got a nine inch display, Mega Side Imaging Plus, Mega Down Imaging Plus, and a dual spectrum Chirp Sonar. It includes GPS mapping, built in Bluetooth, and so on. It's the same unit that I've got on my kayak, and it is awesome. You will not be disappointed. Comes with a retail value of $14.99. Once you get past first place, second place, and third place, we also got special prize categories. We got the largest of species. And now there's not just one species available here at this year's uh, Coastal Kayak Clash. <clears throat> we have eight divisions, which include the nine of the most popular sought after inshore species in the Northeast and Mid Atlantic, including weak fish, porgies, flukes, sea robin, bluefish, black sea bass, blackfish, and a combo hardtail category, which includes both false albacore and bonita, which are just starting to show up and be caught. So the entry with the longest length fish in each of these species will win a rod and reel combo. You got a Penn Clash 2 spinning reel and a matching Fenwick HMG inshore spinning rod. Now that reel retails at the 4,000 size, retail value of $219, and the rod is a uh, it was a seven foot spinning rod, comes in at $99, so it's a $319 package. And then we got the fish of the month. So the Coastal Kayak Clash spans 214 days, and each of the seven months of the tournament has a designated fish species, with May kicked off with a pair of species in which we award a special fish of the month prize. Basically the biggest fish of that designated month species wins the prize, which is a $100 gift certificate to be redeemed at yakattack.com. And the categories back in May was weak fish and porgies. In June, we had fluke. Right now in July, we got black sea bass. August is the fan favorite sea robin. September's hardtails. That's the combo false albacore and bonita. October is going to be bluefish. And then we close things out in November with our buddies, the blackfish. So, of course, be sure to head on over to thefisherman.com right now to get all the complete rules and details on the tournament. Of course, if you're not currently a subscriber, you can take care of that as well, and then you will be completely eligible for the tournament, no additional fee. So, essentially, for the $29.95 yearly subscription to the Fisherman Magazine or the $20 digital subscription, all you got to do from there is sign in, register your account, and you are good to go and get on your way to winning one of those awesome prizes. Good luck. All right, now we're going to hop into the reports. We'll begin up in Massachusetts. Uh, heard from Captain Jason Colby. He made the move to Westport, Massachusetts last week, as I told you. And right off the bat, he got in some really good action on a variety of species. <clears throat> now, my buddy and Fisherman Magazine subscriber Alan Sheriff fished with Jason right away, as he fishes with him quite a bit throughout the season. And he told me they had a pretty good pick of different fish. They had fluke to six pounds, some really big sea bass, and even a stray bluefish mixed in for good measure. 
Then next up, I heard from Garrett Krisnewick. He checked in this week as he was doing some bottom fishing as well up in Buzzards Bay with Liz. <clears throat> they had some really big porgies on the day, a bunch of hubcaps that 13 to 16 inch class, and Liz got her first ever saltwater species, a real big porgy. Nice job there. I also heard from another longtime Fisherman Magazine subscriber, Russ Jago, as he was fishing for black sea bass in Buzzards Bay. We got a little bit of a theme going on here. Uh, but he was fishing along with Ava Lucy, and he said that she was on, on <coughs> excuse me, she was up in the area on home from college, and they had a really, really good day of fishing, a bunch of mixed bottom fish, including a really hefty black sea bass for Ava. Nice job there. All right, sliding on down to Rhode Island. Uh, heard from Captain Tony Greeno, a booked off charters. Now he, he's been uh, running some very productive mixed catch trips, so to speak. Um, he puts his clients in a variety of tasty bottom fish, including fluke, sea bass, and cod. And he's also been getting into striped bass and bluefish uh, at times. Um, he did say that the fluking has been a little bit difficult, so, uh, as it has kind of been everywhere this season for whatever reason, but he's still been picking away at some really big fish along the way as well. And then on these trips, when time allows, after they are finished with the fluke, they head out to deep water, running out for cod. Um, and they've been getting caught up to 20 pounds with plenty of keepers to go around, a couple boat limits even. So some really good uh, 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 double up action right there with Captain Tony on Booked Off. If you want to give it a shot yourself, give him a call today. His number is 401-741-2580. Or of course, you can check out bookedoffcharters.com for more details to book your trip. And of course, let him know that you heard about his reports and his awesome fishing from us right here at the Fisherman Magazine. All right, next up, we got a video report submission coming in. Again, if you want to submit your reports, whether it's a, 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 a photo, a video, what have you, just shoot me an email, tlipinski at thefisherman.com, and I can add you from week to week as well. And this week, we heard from Dave Bocas. He's been a little, uh, we haven't heard from him in a couple of weeks, probably back in trout season, beginning of trout season was the last time we heard from Dave, but no doubt he has been getting out there fishing. So let's see what he did in Rhode Island this week. Thank you, Lipinski. Coming at you today from the front of my buddy's boat. We went out early, bright and early this morning. It's Sunday. We got a water temperature of 68, 70 degrees. The air temp's about uh, 82. Came out here, do some bottom fishing. Got, got our, almost got the entire boat limit of uh, black sea bass. Hold up some fish, you guys. We saw, we got uh, into some real gator blues out here. Um, Keon, my buddy's uh, nephew got a monster around 15 pounds my buddy steve surprise back there got a 10 pound fluke we're at, like i said almost an entire boat limit of uh black sea bass i got a giant porgy man just a really good day now i can't tell you where i am but i know you want my secret fishing spots only only way to get them is to come out here and wet a line with us lipinski back to you l dog all right, thanks a lot, Dave. I'm pretty sure I can figure out where you were fishing by the backdrop there, but uh, nonetheless, I am jealous. You guys did really, really well. Just goes to show there's a good mixed bag going on in Rhode Island right now. Uh, a little bit of everything. I got one more thing before I leave the ocean state here. I didn't get to this report last week. I apologize, uh, but I want to pass along a really, really good catch landed by Brian Theodore. Now we ran into each other uh, uh, this past weekend. We were both stopped by River's End down in Old Saybrook. Um, I was getting some uh, freshwater fly tying stuff, which uh, you'll hear more about that later. And uh, uh, he was in there probably grabbing some eels to head on out. Uh, but about a week earlier, he said he was work. He, he and his buddy were working a couple of spots in Rhode Island. They worked through South County on over into the bay. Basically, plugged it through the entire night. A couple of fish here and there to 34 inches, but really nothing spectacular, so to speak, uh, um, for all the effort that they put in. So they gave it one last ditch effort before sunrise, um, just as the sun was coming up. He was working a, a Beachmaster pencil popper and got hammered by a massive 40-pound class striped bass. Awesome catch right there. I heard of a couple of decent pushes like that um, like, like kind of like everywhere else a little push a couple of big fish popping up and then gone the next day but uh, I know a couple of the breed toys right around the time that he got that fish I heard of a few others right in that range and then it's been spotty since but uh, that just means we are due perhaps this weekend for another push of big bass to come through so congrats on that awesome uh, surf bass 
All right, moving on over to Connecticut. Atlantic Shark Week tournament hosted by JMB Tackle kicked off on the 4th and run, runs through the 12th. As I noted last week, they actually had to push it off one week just to, with all the COVID-19 related delays, they had to push it off a week just to make sure they produce the absolute best tournament that you're going to expect and you've come to expect from the guys at JMB. Um, nonetheless, it's a little bit too early to call a winner just yet. You can check out the leaderboard, which is updated uh, uh, as soon as the fish come in, tristateshootout.com. Uh, we do have a current leader going on right now, but again, it could change by the time you're watching this. Um, but nonetheless, they've been getting some pretty good entries coming in. Uh, we got, let's see, one of the bigger entries at this point, Ed Lockhart of Team Snapshot boated a 278-pound Mako. Um, actually, as, as I was putting my notes together here, that was the biggest Mako entered so far. Nothing, sh not too shabby right there. Uh, and speaking of the Makos, when I was making the offshore report calls this week, I, I got a lot of word of increased Mako activity. Um, they weren't everywhere, but they were much better than they were the past week. One thing that seems to be everywhere are the blue dogs. And actually, if you check out that leaderboard right now, you're gonna see some boats with some crazy release numbers on those blue dogs getting the action. Just, I'm, I'm sure, hoping to get a Mako or even a Thresher. Um, the Threshers haven't really heard a whole lot about them locally in Southern New England just yet, but they should show up any time now. We've got plenty of bay inshore. It's just probably a matter of hitting that right temperature and they will start popping. All right, moving over on the Bassy side of things. Heard from BJ Kogut again this week as we've been touching base week to week. Now we said the action remains, um, as we've all been pretty much saying, consistently inconsistent. Um, he heard of some bass to the 45 inch class, mid sound, a couple of the places that he's been fishing. Um, but as we both confirmed, they seem to be rare fish among schoolies and skunks, no matter what you're using, shore, boat, live bait, plugs, what have you. But uh, nonetheless, BJ's son, Luca, got on the board this week. He said they were chunking. Luca had a steady action to keep him busy, got around 10 big dogfish, and managed a nice 25-inch bass in between. Uh, again, BJ noted that the doggies really moved in, as can be kind of seen by what, uh, what Luca got there. Um, all in that area around the outside of the Connecticut River, this is usually a time when they do start to come through and begin to make things difficult when you're chunking or even when you're eeling. And I mean, I've had them so thick at times in the surf some uh, a few nights when I've even gotten into them on plugs, which can be quite frustrating. But hey, nonetheless, if the bassing is slow and there's not a whole lot of bluefish around, I guess I'll take whatever's going to bend the rod. And then uh, one bite that has been very good and very consistent inside Long Island Sound is just bottom fishing in general. Uh, Captain Greg of the Blackhawk has been doing well on the local grounds, as really all of the local party boats have been uh, sailing out of Niantic and Waterford. Um, limits of sea bass have been pretty common, uh, topping off most of the catches with porgies, some fluke, striped bass, bluefish, of course, the old sea robin, a little bit of everything mixing it up. Um, <clears throat> Greg said he's also doing some specialty trips coming up. They got a couple of night bass trips scheduled, seal watches. Um, they even have some specialty family slash kids trips, which run in the evening. These are more fun trips. Get the kids, get those who, people who don't usually fish, get your family members out there, spend some time fishing, open them up to what we all know is the amazing sport of fishing. So check out the BlackHawkSportFishing.com. You can check out the entire schedule right there, exactly when they're going to sail. And of course, as with all of the boats right now, you must have your reservations in advance. And everybody that I've talked to has been selling out early. So if you want to go fishing, get on it and reserve your spot sooner rather than later, or you're going to be left at the dock. And then last up, uh, speaking of bottom fishing, I got word of the annual Robin's Revenge Fishing Tournament. This is a Sea Robin a tournament. It's taking place once again this year. This time, the weekend of August 15th and 16th. Now they're gonna have, um, I believe it's a $1,000 total cash payout. They are paying out the top three spots. Entry is $40, and you can sign up either at our buddies over at Bobby J's in Milford or Joey C's in Stratford. And of course, if you guys get any of those mega Sea Robins, a couple of things. First off, they are excellent table fare. You can check out the video at thefisherman.com and the YouTube library. Uh, a couple of years ago, I showed how to fillet them. They are excellent. If you like fluke, sea bass, or the likes, they feed on the same thing, so they're very similar. So those sea robins are not trash fish at all. Give them a shot. All right, well, there you have it. I'm Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine, wishing you tight lines if you head out onto the water this weekend. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.